Happy Forgiveness Day, my fellow Silo fans. This is where I ask forgiveness for all the theories I've gotten wrong, which surprisingly hasn't been too many. For those of you who are new here, I have not read the book, so I'm going in completely blind and will only use sleuthing to uncover the secrets of the Silo, and boy do we have a lot to talk about today. As always, I've left timestamps below so you can see all the topics I'll be covering. It's time to clean, let's get into it. Who would have thought an object so frivolous as a Pez dispenser could propel the story forward and offer new and exciting clues about the silo? Last episode, we saw Juliet retrieve George's illegal Pez dispenser relic, telling us that in order to investigate George's death without raising eyebrows, she'd need a good reason. So she breaks into Douglas Trumbull's apartment and plants the Pez dispenser in his medicine cabinet for Paul Billings to find. If the murderer of Marnes and the mayor was collecting relics, he may have been in contact with other enemies of the silo. We also learn that if you're a member of the judicial, you have your own set of keys to your apartment that aren't available to the sheriff. It's likely then that Juliet used her truth badge to pick the lock on Trumbull's apartment just like she did to Patrick Kennedy's supposed apartment last episode. There's also this hand-drawn portrait of Trumbull and someone who could potentially be his father. I wouldn't normally have found this odd if it weren't for Billings somewhat lingering on it for a beat. The dispenser is put in a relic bag, similar to police evidence bags, but there's this symbol on the front which looks an awful lot like a biohazard sign, just to highlight how much these things are feared. We'll later find out there are two relic databases, one operated by the Sheriff's Department and the other by Judicial, which apparently is far more comprehensive. Last episode, we were introduced to this vault behind Sims's desk, and in this one, we get to actually go inside it, where we see dozens of relics of varying sizes, including detailed reports of each relic pertaining to their origin and possession history. Whether these are all of Judicial's relics or just some remain to be seen. The Judicial Relic Database offers information like whether or not an object was pre-silo, if an informant was involved, and the classification of said relics. The Pez dispenser itself is Object 1175, so we can assume there are at least a thousand such relics in Judicial's possession. In addition to the computer database are these journals. Perhaps in the interest of secrecy, they are written down so as to avoid any digital hacking if it were stored on the computer. These journals offer vital information regarding Regarding the relic's history, including interviews of those who possessed it, witnesses, and confidential informants. There is even what appears to be blood stains on some of the paper. As we'll find out, Regina acted as an informant against George, but when Judicial searched the apartment, they never found anything. This is likely because he had already stashed it way down by the machine. Something that struck me as particularly odd was George's tattoo in the first scene. At first, I thought it was some sort of staircase, similar to the one found in the silo. But later on, we'll see a drawing in Regina Jackson's apartment that looks oddly similar. It's only later, when we find the Amazing Adventures in Georgia book, that these spirals belong to a nautilus shell, and there are plenty of similarities between these types of shells and the silo itself, including the spirals and chambers. Regina was George's lover before Juliet, and she paints a pretty grim picture of their relationship. According to her, George was simply using her to deal in the buying and selling of relics. You see, Regina came from a large family, which allows her a greater network of trust when dealing with objects that the silo has deemed illegal. You're less likely that your cousin is going to turn you in when you're like, hey, do you have any of those relics lying around? What drove George were these big questions about the silo, questions that could get you arrested. He'll later tell Juliet that some of these include what's outside, what's beyond what the sensors can see, and how long they've been there, with the biggest question being what if everything you knew to be true was in fact one big lie. George's fascination with relics was likely fueled by a relic passed down in George's family through generations, and at the end of the episode we get to see what this is. Amazing Adventures in Georgia, a travel guide for kids. I even wonder if George was named after this book. This book shows what life pre-silo was like and contains images Juliet could never have imagined, including dolphins and forests. On the front page, we can see the names of George, I'm assuming his mother Anne, and Aunt Gloria. We've already met someone named Gloria in the show who also asked questions about the silo. Could she be George's aunt? But there's a bit hidden on the top left, in cursive the word Melody. It's not capitalized, so likely not a name. Does the book also mean that the silo is somewhere near Georgia? 
Possibly, we did find out the constellation Cassiopeia was visible from the screen, that is if you believe it to be true, and this constellation can only be visible from the northern hemisphere. This book is a great addition to the plot since it will provide Juliet that drive to search for the truth. Prior to this episode, her main focus was to bring justice to George and find his murderer, but as she tells Martha in a crisis of faith, she believes George may not have been who he said he was. Regina painted George as a man who used her to get what he wanted and the reason he moved closer down to Mechanical had more to do with his silo obsession than anything. What better person for him to get romantically linked to than Juliet who had access to all these places and may provide further help in his quest for answers. So Juliet is never sure whether George's love was genuine. Now it doesn't really matter since she has proof that those in charge do not want people in the silo knowing of these powerful relics that show what life was like pre-silo. And just a quick reminder, if you like these types of videos, please be sure to like and subscribe. Every little bit helps the channel out. Since episode one, we've been teased that something is not right with the mirror in Holston and Juliet's apartment. Holston even left a note saying, double the flowers in the mirror. Now we know this is to obstruct the view of those surveilling all the members of the silo. And it also begs the question, how did Holston find out about this? And if he knew about this, what impact did it have on his decision to leave the silo? As someone who hasn't read the books, I have to go by my gut here and think this has something to do with whatever was behind that janitor's closet. At the same time, we also need to be open to the idea that this could be somewhere other than the silo completely. But this dude looks as though he's wearing a janitor outfit, and the other guy looks as though he's wearing something you'd find in the silo. Now janitor dude here says they have to wake someone up, perhaps their boss. The first person who comes to mind is Sims. There's also another person that Regina mentions, a man who knows everything. But the man who knows everything, he comes at night. But pay attention to that last line, he comes at night. The other watcher is hesitant to wake up this mystery person because it is night. So are they the same person? Regina says this person is not judicial, which would eliminate Sims. They could be two different people. It could be Sims but now goes to bed early because he has a son, or that Sims didn't hold that job when Regina was questioned years ago. There's a lot at play here. To prevent these watchers from prying into her life, Regina has fixed aluminum trays against her walls, but admits she isn't sure if they work or not. Gloria also thought someone was listening in on her when Allison came to visit in episode one. Not a major update, but Juliet receives a letter from Ellis down in recycling early on in the episode, stating that she hasn't found what she's looking for, but will let her know if that changes. Back in episode four, Juliet asked Ellis if she had found the hard drive while cleaning out Holston's apartment. It's the hard drive that George traded Regina for the book. A big reveal this episode is that Paul Billings has the syndrome. The syndrome is some sort of disorder that results in involuntary twitching, shaking, flashes of pain, impaired balance and movement, and could lead to the complete shutdown of the nervous system. Apparently, it's against the pact to not disclose if you are experiencing these symptoms, especially if you're in a position of power like Billings. It looks like Juliet will keep Billings secret in exchange for her being allowed to do things, well, let's just say not be by the book. We also get our first look at Paul's family, wife Kat, and daughter Claire. It's through their interaction that we learn the syndrome is not something that can be passed genetically or from person to person. What was going on with Judge Meadows? She says she isn't feeling well, we see her drinking some sort of seltzer water, and she just looks downright sick. This really didn't have anything to do with the plot, so I'm assuming it's setting something up. There's no indication as of yet if this is Sims's doing. My favorite mystery from last episode was Lucas and the Constellations. If you haven't seen my video for last episode, definitely check it out. There are no stars tonight, but Lucas is here anyway because he's come to see Juliet. I'm curious if Lucas's love interest in her will grow as the two uncover the secrets of the silo. If George liked Juliet for the wrong reasons, will Lucas like her for the right ones? Martha gets the MVP of the episode, giving Juliet a much needed pep talk to continue her search for answers. She basically states that fear has has kept her locked up in that grungy mechanical room, and considering she looks on this painting of her and another woman, it's safe to say this was maybe her former partner, one who was briefly mentioned in a past episode. I'm thinking this woman has something to do with why Martha hasn't left her room in 20 years. Now we turn to that part of the video where we look at the season trailers to see if we can pick up any additional information. Just a reminder that I'll only be looking at clips that pertain to new information we received this episode. Check out this image of Bernard and Sims 
victims looking like they're in that surveillance room. We'll later see this image with the same lights and a man on the bottom left who looks like the Watcher from the end of episode 6. Perhaps Sims here is being shown the footage of Juliet looking at the book. Gloria here in some sort of hospital setting accompanied by these type of SWAT members entering long-term care. I wonder if this has anything to do with Gloria's name being in that book. There's this shot of Bernard telling someone, quote, the clock is running, there isn't much time yet. Since the next shot is of Juliet getting tackled in the same cornfield, I wonder if he's letting Juliet know that Sims is onto her since we saw him in that surveillance room. But now I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts and theories on what's going to happen next? Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, let go of whatever it is you're wrestling with. Finish the job.